In this video we're going to learn how to defend yourself against defamation lawsuits. So the first thing is to look at the concept of substantial damages. Uh, this is enshrined in UK law under the Defamation Act, but other jurisdictions have a similar kind of thinking. Though check the laws in, in the country where you are. The first and most important thing to realise about defamation is you want to act now. If a company says you've defamed us or an individual says you've defamed us, you have to be thinking about the clock for damages is running. So imagine a kind of thermometer and the longer that this content is present that they claim is de defamatory, that thermometer is getting higher and higher as more people see it. And when it crosses the substantial damages threshold, which it may already have, there's going to be a lawsuit. The lawsuit will go, he go ahead and that thermometer will keep going and your damages will get worse and worse and worse. So either take down the content, I know you don't like it from free speech perspectives, but minimise the damages and act straight away. There is a thing called the Streisand effect, which is where bringing a lawsuit to stop people seeing something results in so much more publicity that more people see it and this keeps the damages counter going up. So act now, put ice on that thermometer, take it down, pause it until this whole thing works it out. The first defence, I'm going to call this defence zero because it means you don't even have to bother defending the case. Um, the first bullet point basically sums it up. If you have a limitation period, it means if the case is not brought within that time, for example in California it's one year but New Mexico it's three, varies country to country, I've given you the key ones which should cover most of the viewers, but if a case is brought out with that, it's a, it might not have bothered. There, There's no way that that case will be heard, it, it's just not a case. If you publish something a year ago that trashes someone's reputation, and they don't bother to do anything about it for three years. And then they say, oh, now we want to sue you. Well, you've left it too late. So don't even bother defending the case if it's out with the statute of limitations. It's just gone. There is no case. Myths. Let's get through these. <coughs> False claims are always liable. That's not <coughs> entirely true. It's an oversimplification. Opinion is never liable. That's also incorrect to say. Um, it has to be... You have to actually hold it as an opinion and it has to be stated as an opinion, not an opinion kind of disguised as, as really the statement of fact. Free speech is an absolute defence. Uh, that's not true. Um, it's more true in America with the, the First Amendment than it is in other countries, but it's still, you don't want to just say free speech is an absolute defence because that is not correct. Um, quotes are never libel, that's also incorrect. Repeating libel, republishing li libel, can be itself libel. Though there are some protections that we'll talk about. The first and most simple defence is the truth. If you can prove that what you said is absolutely true in every respect, that is an absolute defence to libel. You can't be sued for stating something that is true, that is not defamation. Um, the next is not quite truth, but honest opinion or fair comment. Um, it has to be the statement of an opinion. It can't be a fact disguised in opinion. Simply saying, in my opinion, and then listing a whole load of things as facts. That's, that's not what that means. It has to be an actual opinion. It has to be not reckless. Um, so it has to be some basis for stating that. And... The opinion actually has to be held, and there's a, a British case that backs up that point. For example, the person suing you could quite easily, um, if it were in fact the case, um, prove that you didn't actually hold that opinion. So if you state something as an opinion that's damaging to someone else, but you didn't actually hold that opinion, you just wrote that maliciously to damage them, then the fact that it is an opinion or it's stated as an opinion doesn't help doesn't give you any defence because it really wasn't an opinion. The second defence is the public interest. You have to reasonably believe that it's in the public interest. Um, it's a very strong defence to neutral reporting. For example, if one newspaper publishes 
um, allegations that are later found to be defamatory and you neutrally report on them, there there is some defence on that from a public interest perspective because this is a um, a big media story and you don't want the media to be completely unable to report on something. So they have this neutral reporting. But if you report on something that's later found to be defamatory but you're arguing that it's completely true and this person should be stripped of this and kicked out of that, then that you can't use the public interest. Um, for example, if you're reporting on an expert questioning the effectiveness of a drug, the pharmaceutical company would struggle to find a defamation suit because that person is an expert, so it's reasonably believed um, that it's in the public interest to respect um, to report on the claims of an expert, um, and if you're reporting it neutrally, you're not defaming the company, you're simply reporting on the news that a prominent expert has raised questions. The third defence is privilege. The following things in that list, um, reporting on them um, accurately, it must be fair and accurate reporting, you can't misconstrue these things and say, well, sort of was in a scientific journal but that wasn't the conclusion I made up that bit uh, you have to report on it honestly um, so parliamentary content um, other parts of government for example findings of the Federal Trade Commission reporting on those are not liable um, court proceedings scientific journals the last thing you can do it's a kind of partial defense if you kind of going right yes this is defamation I've screwed up this is your go-to, is to reduce the damages, you're going to lose, you have defamed them, how can you get your damages down? For example, show low readership, maybe not many people seen this, hence the damages are not as high. Um, you Show off your mitigation to say, oh yeah, we took it down in time, um, so we minimised the damages, we ran an apology, those sort of things are all good to do once you find, right, I have defamed them. You are to question the extent of the damages. Again, if you put an apology, you can say, well, um, 10,000 people seen it, but 100,000 people seen our apology, and it was widely reported on our apology, so therefore the damages are not as high as they would otherwise have been. And one last one that's somewhat controversial, but it is in fact a partial defence, is to question the reputation. Libel is brought to defend someone's reputation, so if they don't have a reputation to defend, then there's not really the same level of damages. A, a classic case I can remember is a company, a man that was banned from running um, any company was running a pension fund and there was questions about his administration of the pension fund. Well, he, was, he went to jail for accounting fraud. Um, this is quite an old case. Um, so having went to jail for accounting fraud and been banned and not allowed to run a pension fund and was then suing for libel because someone was complaining how he was running a pension fund. That's not libel. So hopefully this has given you a kind of basis to go on and start further researching what you can do about your libel case. And I hope this is helpful to you and best of luck in defending your case. Thank you for watching.